Today, we'll talk about 10 of the most disgusting and disturbing Discord servers. There are obviously so many more, but I thought we'd only talk about 10 in this video. I also tried to cover a wide range of servers, so it doesn't become repetitive. Before we start, I just want to plug my Patreon one last time. I uploaded the first episode to my Patreon exclusive series, and the reception has been very good, as you can see here. For $2 per month, you gain access to pretty much everything I offer on there. Without further ado, please leave a like and don't forget to sub if you enjoy. Let's start. Another way predators work is through exploitation. 45-year-old Shane Patrick Pansek posed online as a girl, blackmailed a 13-year-old and forced him to record videos of him doing it to his dog and licking his own feces. For this, he would use Discord, Twitch and Roblox. Initially, he would pose as a teenage girl on Discord. He decided to call himself Xbox Diamond Girl 2683 and tried to bait young boys, which worked out in the end. He would get the boys to send him very explicit material. In exchange, he'd give him an electronic gift card. But it didn't stop there. In fact, he was only getting started. Now that he had explicit material of the boy, he could use it for blackmail. He would threaten to post it if he refused to do what he desired. And this is where things get pretty sick. He would make some victims livestream their showers on Discord. He'd then let these boys drink their own urine and semen. This guy was just pure evil. Thankfully, this man is now behind bars, but God knows how many other people are out there using the same twisted technique. I know it's very hard to believe, but there are actually predators on Discord. There are endless videos on YouTube where people join random servers and catfish these losers with anime profile pictures. You're 23 and she's 14. Yeah, that's my mistake. So, if you know it's a mistake, then why'd you do it? These servers obviously can't advertise themselves as looking for underage girls, so they will use a few tricks to disguise what they are doing. In the following, I'll actually talk about two servers. Here, I want to give a shout out to Lucid for making a pretty good video on the topic. In his video, he states that these servers cannot use the official CP word in their name, so they instead use chess piece or casual politics, obviously hinting that this is a server for CP. On these servers, they use terminology for trading. Here it says, send to receive, if you know you know, direct message. They have a few videos themselves, and they want to trade it for other videos. That's pretty common in these highly illegal groups, since in most circumstances, that's the easiest and safest way to get very unknown material. What's also interesting in the case Lucid talked about, is that you get increasingly more access to the server and the channels if you invite more and more people. This way, they can later down the line sell the server, make certain roles exclusive to those that pay, and so on. Payments are obviously made through a crypto. So yeah, they turn it into a full-fledged business. A different example of such a server is Van's Kingdom. I initially heard about the server through a video that Visual Venture made, but the credit definitely belongs to Jessica, who investigated this topic. In the description of the server, we can see that it is disguised as a server aimed at a particular kink, where Van is a dominant alpha male and is looking for submissive girls. In the server's description it says, Welcome to Van's Kingdom. A server for all slaves who want to be owned by the only king. Jessica initially asked Van what his server was about, and his response reads, A kingdom of group of girls who all worship one king. I'm a dominant guy who is looking for submissive girls who I own. Van is fully aware that trolls could come into a server and mess with him. This is why you need to be verified when you enter Van's Kingdom. For the verification process, it is required that you take a picture of yourself and hold up a piece of paper where it says Van Owned. You don't have to necessarily show your face, but it needs to become obvious that you are indeed female. As we established, Van is looking for a group of girls. And by girls, he obviously isn't referring to women in their 20s and 30s. To join a server, you only need to be 11 years old. Jessica also DM'd Van, acting like a 14 year old girl, and Van completely fell for it. The server was 200 members strong, and according to Jessica, they were mostly underage. A few months later, Van's server was removed from Discord. Van's kingdom is no more. 
When it comes to the darker side of humanity, there is not much that sinks lower than traffickers. And just a heads up, this is one of the most disgusting things in this list. A lot of predators work alone, and are too ashamed to share the dark secrets with someone else. But there are some cases where a group of like-minded sickos work together. And these people are on Discord. The victim's name hasn't been given out on any news outlet so far, and for good reason. So just for reference, let's call him Jacob. Jacob was only 15 years old and was speaking to someone on Discord who would promise him a better life. He was told to leave a note for his mother to tell her not to bother looking for him. The teen was in a vulnerable state, clearly unhappy with their life, which the traffickers took advantage of. He was promised a better life, but instead he was now living in a trailer with four other men. It would soon become apparent to this kid that he would have a specific role within this trailer. He was now their slave. For an entire year, he lived in squalor while they all took turns on this boy. They put this kid through hell, purely so they could satisfy their own pleasure. Thankfully, these sickers were caught and sent to jail. As for the boy, he now has to go through trauma therapy. Shootings are an all too common occurrence in the US. These acts are almost inconceivable, and it's almost impossible to imagine what thoughts are going through their mind when committing such a heinous crime. But a band Discord server gave us a disturbing insight into a young man named Robert Cremo. On the surface, he seemed like an ordinary kid. Family members and a scout leader had nothing bad to say about him. The police didn't even have him on their radar. There was, however, a side of him that was hidden from friends and family. And under the cloak of anonymity on Discord, he let some of his inner thoughts known. He was a rapper performed under the name Awake, and would often glorify taking the lives of multiple people. Taking on the persona of a rapper allowed him to disguise his insane and violent thoughts. So Discord server was created for him and his fans. Here he would discuss his disturbing thoughts about violence, crimes, and so on. Some of his messages included effing commies and commies everywhere. The discussion of politics was quite chaotic. There's one pose of a picture of Bud Dwyer, an American politician who, you know, took his own life live on TV in the 80s. The caption was, I wish politicians still gave speeches like this. The Discord server name is SS. While this could stand for anything, given what we know about this guy, this is most certainly a reference to, you know what. Then, on July 4th, it unfortunately happened. The evil thoughts of Robert became reality. He went into Highland Park and began going on a spree. He took the lives of seven and wounded 48 others. The Discord server took an even more twisted turn afterwards. A group of 4chan trolls invaded the server and began praising him and posted memes about the attack. Eventually, it was shut down. This will be the longest topic in this video. Discord and furries go hand in hand, and as I've already covered the Care of the Wolf case in my previous video, they are extremely disgusting and depraved individuals in their community. And I want to clear the air and say that, for the record, I am a zoof. You did not mishear that. I am a zoof. I do not have a thing for humans. I am more attracted to dogs like German Shepherds. Hypnotist Sappho made this video in 2021. Strangely, no one really cared about him at all and he would have gotten unnoticed with everything, but he randomly decided to open up, which no one really asked for. He claims that he feared that it would get leaked anyway, so he decided to do it himself. The video is a 40 minute talk from a highly deranged individual trying to justify that having intercourse with animals should be as acceptable as being a part of the LGBTQ community. Worst part is, I'm not even kidding. And it's a lot like when homosexuals were coming out in the 1960s. The sad reality is that this is nothing that is unheard of. Many cases exist online. Usually, they will try to hide it by spreading lies and misinformation like Carol the Wolf did, but for someone to be so open about the desire to be intimate with dogs is truly baffling. His YouTube channel exists to this date, claiming that his haters have low IQ. Besides his coming out, the channel itself doesn't really feature anything interesting, but people from all over the internet have compiled quite a lot of information about him and his past, 
whereas Discord server also plays a major role. This is also where we learn that Sappho is not only into animals, but also into children. Sappho would join furry Discord servers on VR chat such as Furry Talk and Chill. He would befriend those people and engage in roleplay with them. One of them was just while Sappho was 21 at the time. According to the leaked chat logs on Discord, we can see that he became very intimate with the team, where Sappho is clearly pleasuring himself, if you know what I mean. He was banned from the server and also the VR community, but that didn't stop him from continuing to search for prey. He would create his very own Discord server named Mama Sappho Hypnotherapy Server. While he claimed that no one under 18 would have access to the Not Safe for Work chat, we can see here that a moderator, who even confirmed that he was underage, had access to those chats. He also sent the same boy an image of a very specific toy. To get further confirmation in his belief that having an intimate relationship with your dog is okay, he would invite one of his friends that also was doing it to his dog. You want to mention exactly how you came out or who you came out to? I thought a lot about terminology I could use and, you know, potentially getting asked questions and uh, how I was going to handle that. And essentially, I only said I used the word attraction. In this case, I said other species. I left it very wide open. She didn't, my mom's awesome. She didn't pry me, say, oh, you know, are you screwing your dog? You know, she was just like, okay. You know, thank you for telling me. You know, that's I'm glad that you found someone who you're happy with and I'm glad this worked out. And that's you know, that's all I wanted for you is to just to find someone and be happy. Sappho uses platforms such as Twitter and Discord to get in touch with vulnerable to exploit them, even saying that he likes to be called mommy, and people as young as thirteen see him as an inspiration. Some even claiming that he tried to manipulate them into being Zeus. As for the real identity of Sappho, his allegedly real name is Valerie, and he is or was an IT technician at the US Air Force. Before people were able to dig up much more about his past, he deleted his Facebook page. What wasn't 100% confirmed that Sappho was really into his interactions with his were leaked. In these screenshots, it becomes very apparent that and Sappho were in a romantic relationship. We can also see from the name in these screenshots that Sappho is called Val a short form for Valerie. You can see Valerie also being used as his Twitter name, so it's basically confirmed that the Facebook page indeed belonged to him. I could go on for many more minutes about what Sappho did and other furries that shared the same opinions on these topics, but I think you get the point. While Sappho was gone for a while, he actually, unfortunately, returned. I have to give credit to Lanza here. He made a pretty good video about the comeback of Sappho, and I'll be referring to his video in the following. Sappho's Twitter was unbanned after Elon Musk took over, obviously a huge L. He continues coping on Telegram that it is not illegal to date a m After realizing that his comeback wasn't celebrated and he was getting hate for it, he claimed he just came back out of spite because of some idiots and that he has way bigger obligations in his life anyway, like going to church and praying. Lanza also managed to track the real name of Sappho, which is Connor. Sappho even panicked so much that he texted Lanza, trying every possible method of coping to make him feel guilt, but obviously to no avail. But uh, yeah, with his real name being leaked, his identity being shown, and everyone knowing what he does for a job, I think pretty much every requirement has been met for this guy to go to prison for all eternity, but let's see what happens. I'm assuming you've heard of incels or involuntary celibate males. They usually hold extremely negative views about women and believe that their lack of female attention lies with women and not them. Dark cells are a subset of incels. A lot of incels believe that they can escape their involuntary celibate fate through pickup artists or self-improvement, whereas dark cells believe that there is no hope and they will be an incel forever. Now we could talk about individual servers that are dedicated to these people, but let's talk about a very specific case, which I also covered in a previous video. Bianca Devins was a 17-year-old girl who became close with 21-year-old Brandon. They would chat on Instagram, but both of them saw the relationship differently. Bianca believed they were good friends and not really dating, whereas Brandon thought that they were exclusive. One night, they went to a concert, and Brandon caught Bianca kissing another guy. She thought they weren't together at all, so she didn't really think too much about it. 
But when Brandon was driving her home, they had an argument. He felt that if he couldn't have Bianca, nobody could. He ended up taking her life that night. Adding to his insanity, he began posting pictures of Bianca's body on a Discord server. He posted a photo on Discord with the caption, Sorry, you're going to have to find somebody else to orbit. Orbit or orbiting is basically stalking someone online without directly communicating with them. The police found that Brandon was also the administrator of a Facebook page known as Dark Cell Gaming. Brandon made a post that read, This may be my final post. They're coming for me, and I've done something very, very terrible. I am sorry. Brandon is now serving some serious jail time for this, and rightly so. When people meet up on Discord, it is often a nice gathering of like-minded individuals. This is fine if they share a common interest in gaming or movies, but what happens when their common interest is hating everything else? This is how one of the darkest moments in recent American history started off with a Discord server. Discord has sometimes been referred to as a safe haven for racists. These people may have friends or colleagues following them on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter, but Discord provides them with an anonymous account where they can let their true thoughts be known. On this Discord server, lots of very disgusting memes were shared. Not only do they casually drop the n-word in this group chat, they talk rather horrifyingly about taking the lives of black people. A photo of police arresting a black man comes with the phrase, throw another on the barbie, or barbecue. And there are other chats for them organizing events. This was for the 2017 Unite the Right protest in Charlottesville. In this protest, they shouted, you won't replace us. Outside of the Discord chat, they had to tone down their position and allude that the white person was being replaced and made themselves out to be the victim. Outside on the streets, they were too scared to say the n-word. But this riot erupted in tragedy. Lots of people decided to protest against their protest, and so one of them decided to bring his car over and drive straight into them. One woman lost her life. In the Discord server, they were celebrating it. Someone posted victory, acting like this was a win in their book. Even worse, someone posted a quote-unquote hilarious meme about the car driving into these protesters. Instead of Back to the Future, this car was Back to the... you know what. Most of them see nothing wrong with what they did, even planning to gear up more for the next rally. In Ireland, there was a Discord server so horrible that it changed the laws of the country. On the server, 500 users were looking at lewd pictures of women. Well, this doesn't sound too bad. The problem is the origin of these pictures. Initially, the images consisted of OnlyFans leaks, meaning you were able to view images for free that you would otherwise need to pay for. Subscribers for these OnlyFans pages would take photos they paid for and send them out to other people on the server. It was soon revealed that it wasn't just OnlyFans images being shared. Instead, this was also a haven for revenge adult videos. Guys in Ireland were taking pictures that were sent privately and shared them on Discord with 500 other people. 11,000 images were found on the server. There were channels and categories set up in a way where the pictures of girls were categorized into cities, etc. Meaning there was quite a lot of admin work going into the creepy server. It was handled quite professionally, almost like a business. But the most alarming issue is that these photos were not just of adult women. A lot of the images shared on the server were actually of underage girls. Someone made an Instagram story captioned with, There's hundreds of them right now, looking for images of 15 year old girls. In the chat, you can see a user asking for a specific name, to which people reply that she's either 15 or 16. A guy named Billy G then says that most people are in that age range and calls it kinda sus. What he exactly means is unclear. Now this entire thing blew up so much in the news in Ireland that the politicians were in a lot of pressure to react, which they did. They passed a new law that incriminates individuals sharing intimate images without consent, and the Discord server in question was obviously shut down. But there were already laws about sharing photos of minors anyway, so who knows if these creepy servers will continue. According to Wired, there are servers named al-Baghdadi and... I'm not even gonna say that, but it stands for a slogan which means State of Islam Remaining. There were also numerous encouragements on the server to start widespread attacks in western cities during Christmas events. The reason why they use Discord is due to bigger social media sites such as YouTube, Twitter and Facebook cracking down on these groups 
which forced them to exploit lesser known and more privacy oriented messenger apps such as Discord or Telegram. I tried really hard to find some archives or screenshots of chat logs to show here, but there's really nothing I was able to find. Anyway, the group we are talking about here, which I cannot even mention by name, has a very big strength, which other cult-like or ideology-driven sects or groups do not have. One doesn't need to have any previous association with the group to join them. Anyone can pledge their allegiance to this group, and this is a tactic which has worked really well in their favor. The servers were used in different ways. It featured official media from the organization, shared telegram links and commentary about the group's operations and strategy. There's even one example in the UK, where a 15 year old boy joined the Discord server in order to join the group. Through Discord, he decided to post a video that could help people support the group's cause. The video showed people how to make a homemade device and set it off at a nearby location. He posted a video about a device named TATP, which is also known as Mother of Satan. The video was titled, Must Fight Them or Move Ahead, and there were also documents showing how to make this device, which was sneakily titled, Cooking Recipes, potentially to avoid discourse moderation filters. The teenager was arrested for these posts for inciting crime on a larger scale. Discord is full of scammers, and the way they work is to trigger some of your biggest insecurities in the hope that you take the bait. One good example is the, is this you scam? So imagine you're on Discord minding your own business until you get a message from someone you know. They mention that they no longer want to be friends with you, and this is because they have seen posts about you that are incredibly shameful. So this right here could be an example of such messages. So the message has enough information to worry you without actually letting you know what they are referring to. And anyone with any particular skeletons in their closet or even paranoia might be freaked out by this message. The scam works by triggering the emotional part of your brain and getting you to act fast. To see what you've done wrong, you need to enter a Discord server called Shame using a QR code. But once you've logged in with this code, you'll be unable to enter the server. In fact, you'll find yourself suddenly locked out of your account. You've been hacked, and now that they have your account, they can do the same scam all over again and contact your friends. They will send the same message to your friends, and the cycle begins once again. But these scammers are hoping that you have other accounts linked to it, particularly any crypto, PayPal or NFTs. And if it's connected to Instagram or Facebook, it can be used to rob your identity. But the people doing this look like saints compared to the other people in this video. That's why this is the last topic of the video. I just want to quickly thank the legend tier patrons consisting of Amy Stringfellow, Ellen Erberle, Andrea906, Bodie, Brian Cave, Rana Chef, Callum Bowman, Cam the Jellyman, Dennis Greasefire, Digital Capybara, Jeb, K4S Silver, King Cookin, Lil Roos, Manny Johnston, MG, Mumodo Nee, Natalie Weston, Nee Castle, Rice FM, Tequila Mockingbird, Top K, and Vladislav Korshevi. I also made a video on 10 of TikTok's worst disgusting band users. Click here to see it.